Hey guys, Scanner Danner here with my son Caleb behind the camera as usual at my brother's shop, Danner's Automotive in Bethel Park, Pennsylvania. Uh, today we're doing a 2009 Buick Enclave and it is a friend of ours car uh, who told us that he previously had a fuel pump replaced and then had a wire that was modified and run back to the pump to the engine computer and uh, he continued to set uh, a check engine light um, for that particular circuit that someone jumped. And so he let it go for a long time until it was due for inspection. We have a check engine light policy here in PA that you, know, you can't get an emission inspection with a light on. So we need to fix this the right way, but then he also told us that it doesn't run anymore. So he had it towed here. And so we have a lot of unknowns going on with this car, uh, but essentially, I think it revolves around the fuel pump system. We also have some critter damage on here. So this car was towed to us. Of course, the battery was completely dead and uh, we've had the charger on this thing now for about an hour or so. And uh, we should be good to go as far as the battery goes. But uh, unfortunately, we don't have a lot of history because it was completely dead. So any codes that are in here now, we need to treat them not with a, a lot of confidence because weak battery can set uh, trouble codes. And when I first connected the battery up, the key was on and everything came to life. And so I think I want to start with uh, clearing these faults out of here and then re uh, rereading them after starting it a few times. So that's the plan, but I do see some up front. I have a fuel tank pressure sensor circuit low code. I have a fuel pump relay control circuit open code. And those would be the main two that I'd care about with the engine. Nothing in the transmission. We have uh, lost communication with the differential control module on the ABS. Left rear wheel speed sensor fault. Some door switch faults tire pressure sensor stuff. So I'm going to clear these and we'll do a rescan. But it was towed here. And when I tried to start it earlier before we uh, turned the camera on, just to see how the battery state was, it uh, start ran installed. And I think that's what Jared told us. Jared's the owner of this car. I think he did say that it start, it was a start run stall type thing. Not totally sure on that. I said I was going to crank it a few times before we did the code scan. I'm not. Immediately we have a code for the fuel tank pressure sensor and that may be what they have wired here. I'm not sure fuel tank pressure sensor circuit low. That is the uh, what I would call a hard fault there and we have a hard fault for lost communication with differential control module. All right, let's see what this thing does when I when I crank it. I don't think we're going to be doing anything with that differential fault. Got nothing. Complete no start. Let's see if we set that fuel pump relay fault again. Yes, immediate. We have a fuel pump relay control circuit open fault. This being a gas direct injection system, um, I don't know if they have a low pressure service port on this or not to check fuel pressure. But given that we have this code for fuel pump relay, that makes me want to go after fuel immediately. And I think we do that. Another test that we could do is introduce a fuel source in the intake and see if it runs off of a fuel source. Um, that is not, I don't think necessary. I think with the fuel, fuel pump relay control circuit fault, we can start there. I certainly would if I was not on camera. The only thing that I'm uh, wavering on here is just to prove to you guys that this is this no start is fuel related. Um, I think I'll do a little fuel shot just to show you that. Don't like using starting fluid. I'd rather use carburetor cleaner before I put this in. I'm going to crank it again. Let you guys hear it. Nothing. Shot a starting fluid, which is behind the mass airflow sensor.
That should have that should have started. At least attempted to. did try. I don't want to do excessive. I'm just trying to prove a point that we're starting with the fuel system on this. Alright, so there's your start run stall. This is fuel related. We are attacking this code for sure as a starting point. I believe the fuel pump is not running on this at all. And that's why he had it towed. I also believe that whoever ran this wire um, did so and didn't bother to find out where the problem was. And I wouldn't be surprised if we end up with a wiring problem associated with the relay that's related to this wire that someone else ran. Uh, as far as the fuel pump relay goes and its location, what I don't know is does this uh, use a fuel pump control module. I'm sure that it does, it being GDI. Um, let me just uh, see if I can do some quick tests here. Fuel pump relay control open. And let's see if in our box we have a fuel pump relay. I do not see a pump relay here, which would make sense if we have a fuel pump control module. All right, so unfamiliar system what do you do you familiarize yourself grab a wiring diagram for this fuel system and see where this um, relay is this is an enclave did i say encore e-n-c-l-a-v-e enclave i don't know i think it's an enclave too i don't know all right so here's my pump assembly the motor itself we have a pink and a gray wire there is no relay for this, even though we have a relay code. See the two wires were, that are highlighted. We're gonna go down the line here to these, um, the next diagrams. It keeps them highlighted, which is awesome. And what we have is a fuel pump control module that uh, is providing a power and a ground. It says fuel pump volt on the gray wire on pin 47 and then the pink wire 16 it's calling that the low ref when you see low ref that's usually a ground so that's interesting that they would use a pink wire for the ground i would have assumed that to have been power in the gray wire being a ground but just going by the terminology here yeah we need to locate this fuel pump control module where is it but there is no relay this is um a module that will talk to the network computer data lines you can see there's not a whole lot to it they don't show me where it's located in the component location. Fuel pump flow control module mounted under the rear of the vehicle, rear of the fuel tank. Okay, guess where we're going? In the back. <laughs> here, come here. Bring your camera. I want to see myself. It's just broken. Oh, yeah. That might be our problem. What do you think, Caleb? That is our wire, too. And what did they adapt that to? I'll have to get a little closer look. That might be a gray. Boy, look how, how close that is to the harness. That sucks. Here, this would be why we have a speed sensor code. Check this out. Broken wire here too. That's to the speed sensor. We also had like some differential fault code too. Oh, more wires, look. It's called rodents, man. Where does he freaking live? Where does he live? I don't know. This wire's like hanging out too. Those are, that's rodent damage, man, all of it. Some tedious wiring repairs coming up. So, what wire is this? This is a like light blue with a with a white stripe. Let's go consult the wiring diagram. Dark green and white relay control. Ha! There is a relay control. That's the wire that's open. 
I didn't see a fuel pump relay. Let's see, what page would that go to? Fuel pump relay control. Okay, so there isn't. That's the engine computer signal to the fuel pump module to do its thing. So they're calling it relay control. There is no relay. It's a wire that goes from the engine computer to the fuel pump module, okay? And it is labeled as relay control. And that matches our fault code that we had. Relay control circuit. All right, let me get some stuff to fix this. So I'm, I'm gonna use um, heat shrink bud connectors. And uh, some of my viewers, some of you guys have in the past turned me on to these things called solder sleeves. I gotta tell you, I, I'm, I'm not a huge fan of them. I, I'm not because it's a low temperature solder, number one, and number two is um, getting them connected together uh, is a little bit difficult because um, you're relying on the strength of the wire to slide the sleeve over. And when you have like small areas to work with, like I do, it really just is not the greatest uh, tool. So, and I did buy some crimpers. Unfortunately, these crimpers end up damaging. Okay, if I use that one, it shouldn't. They end up damaging these heat shrink connectors. If I go all the way in, maybe. All right, we'll see what we'll see what we can do. Having Caleb on wheels is what I need. <laughs> That looks sketchy as hell. Here, no, he's good, man. That's him. That's all him right there. He's doing Don with a 4K TV. Here you go, Caleb. It's your... You'll be fine, man. Get on that thing. Come on, man. You're taking too long. Well, do you want him to fall with that freaking camera you just bought? I do, it would be funny. Okay, well then get it. I'm not that far off the ground. <laughs> good idea. change your mind. Good idea to ratchet strap that together, but we'll be fine. <laughs> did you All right. get a picture of what we're doing here? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he did. Okay, well, so. Here you go, if you need it. Oh, this is green. So listen, <laughs> this, this wire, Caleb, was run by someone else who didn't bother to look Holy crap. for damage. There's damage here. There's damage here. Is that the wire you bypassed? Uh, that's the wire that they had bypassed, which right. is the relay control for the fuel pump. So okay. there is no relay. This is the engine computer's control wire that tells the fuel pump module to, hey, go ahead and turn this okay. thing on. And that's the wire that's broken. That's why it's not starting. And somebody fixed this by running a new wire rather than just looking at and the harness. The problem. And the, har the problem is clearly right here. So we got broken wire up here. All right, wheel yourself over here. Don't mind if I do. It's possible our original brake is this guy right here. That they missed it. So we're going to fix this right. Yeah, there's your wire. The piece of it. What do you think, Caleb? I think we reattach this to this. See what happens. Let's see what else does this go to? Sorry, I'll get there, man. Sure. I was gonna say this would be our maybe our four-wheel drive issue too, but this is just the fuel pump module. Look at all this. This would be why he said he said that they ran a new wire, if you remember, Caleb, but he continued to have a check engine light that he couldn't get rid of. Guess why you don't run new wires? Because you got other problems and they're right here. I'll bet you one of these is the fuel tank pressure sensor. In fact, let's pull that data pit up while I'm wiggling the wiring. So remember the codes. Yeah, we just said another one too. Lost communication with fuel pump control module. Sure did. <laughs> All right, no problem there. Let's go data display. We want sensor data, possibly. I'm looking for fuel tank pressure remember we had a fuel tank pressure low code fuel tank pressure voltage is zero fuel tank pressure so we'll look at those two guys as we're as we're fixing wires 
can't believe they didn't just, you know, pull it back a little bit, man. You could see the damage. And we could test this before we crimp it, but I don't care. It's just as easy to do this. I'm afraid of the crimpers that I just used. If you, if you don't crimp these, crimp these heat shrink ones right, it'll damage it. And for where we're located, a damaged a damaged uh, heat shrink butt connector is not going to be good. These are like maybe not the right type of crimpers for what we're doing. Yeah, these crimpers are no good. See all the heat shrinks moving away from that? All right, at least I know moving forward I can't use that. There's got some epoxy like glue on that. I'll just um, I'll liquid tape that part. But from this point, I can't use those, those crimpers I just bought. Not for, not for these anyway. Well, let me fix this one and see if we can get rid of this fuel pump code. All right, I have one of about 10 more. Neck's gonna be killing me by the time we finish this. All right, we still have a fuel tank pressure voltage reading of zero. Uh, we'll, we'll continue to, to look here. I thought that maybe we would have fixed that already, but yeah. well, the fuel tank pressure is actually Oh, that's why we have a no column with the module, because I have it pretty much unplugged. If this doesn't start, Caleb, remember we adapted to that wire that was hanging out, and I didn't check it any further upstream. It could still be damaged upstream. I'm just clearing fault codes, because we had a no column with the fuel pump module. Fuel pump relay circuit open still, so... That means it's still damaged further up, Caleb. That sucks. So battery's weak. Um, what's our battery life looking like on this? We're doing okay. All right, I got the key off. I wish I could keep a charger on there. We gotta go back up. Wait a minute. They might have cut the wire up here and I'm reusing the original wire. So we got to fix it up here. Key is off right now. I'm going to disconnect this computer. So you see the wires cut on that side. We're reusing that. So I need to reattach it. Given that they didn't leave me much, I'm going to reuse their, their upper one. I hate to use this one, but it's so close to the connector that I just don't want to have a problem. And I'm going to reuse that one and we'll We'll reattach it here. It's like a rescue mission here. Dun, 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 dun. Okay, now this should start. Come on. Come on, man. I really hate dead batteries and no start problems. I'm gonna blame my brother on this one. He did at least push it in for me today and put it on a rack. So we'll give them that. Come on, now what? I still have a fuel pump relay control circuit open. I should have just stayed with their wire. We got other brakes that way. No codes, fuel tank pressure codes back. Fuel pump relay control circuit. <laughs> oh, it's the same wire over there. That's the same wire. The, the other wires that we knew we needed to fix, that's, that's where it goes. That's these guys. This is the same wire. Follow me. I, I'm done with the crimpers I have. I'm about to buy a pair. And we're gonna, we're gonna go inside the Snap-on truck. A place where you can lose yourself <laughs> and spend way too much money. I should have brought my SD logo, Caleb. We could have we could have hooked him up with one. I have one. Do you? I just want it. Nice. Let's see that. So that's the cutter on the end. Yeah, the here's for your bear. The yeah. one in the center is for your for the insulated ones. Yep. Yeah, gotcha. And it doesn't break through yeah that's what we need too now here's a smaller version hmm. 
that they have the strippers on the back side of the handles, but it's set up the same. Yeah, and that's the bear in the front and then insulated in the back. The only problem with, with those would be leverage. Yeah, the only the only thing I don't like, man, I would like this better if it didn't have the cutters on the front. I think that's why the guys like those, so mm -hmm. they don't have the chance on cutting the, mm -hmm. the wires. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you want to take it inside and crimp a connector with it. Can I? Yeah, sure can. Nice. Take both of them in. Nice. 79. Here, wait, let's get a shot of the inside of the truck. I mean, we brought everybody out here for a reason. <laughs> this is... This is Caleb's first time in a tool truck. This is what it looks like. This is a real one. A place, like I said, where you can get lost and spend way too much money. But look, sometimes this is the way you gotta do it, right? These crappy uh, Harbor Freight tools, they don't cut it for the, for, for the pros. They don't, I mean, you can get away with stuff, but you need some Snap-on stuff sometimes. So props to Snap-on. Thanks, Matt. So the, the upper part's for a, a non-insulated, and then down below, down here, is for insulated. Same thing up here. That's for the bare, that's for the insulated, then you got long cutters. The, the only thing I don't like about these is the cutter's so long, and it's kind of, you know, in the way a little bit. I think I might like the smaller ones. We're going to give these smaller ones a shot first. Or you buy both. <laughs> I don't want both. <laughs> The hard part about the ones I have is you have to go between first before you put it in. And so um, I wanted to have one that I can put the butt connector on first. Insulated is for, yeah, I like these. I like these. Are those the smaller ones? Oh yeah. Yep, this is me right here. All right, now let's see what that looks like. Here's the big thing, when you use the heat strength butt connectors, some of those, if the crimp, if the crimper is too aggressive, then it'll split the connector. We're gonna find out here in a second. <laughs> these, these butt connectors are so dirty. Matt, you got yourself a sale here, brother. Okay. I'm buying the smaller ones. I really like that. I like the, the fact that it did not damage, it did not damage it at all. We have to come down here with some liquid tape for the rest of this that's not broken. I think I got all the ones. The ones I could see anyway. Let's take this down. We got to fix this wire up front again, Caleb, because I switched it. I got to switch it back. Here, this will be the first one that you'll be able to see pretty decent. It everything you hoped it could be yes it truly is you know there's something to say about a guy that brings you the tools and uh, a little pricey for this little tool but sometimes the pricey tools are worth it so they were 50 it was 51 dollars so those the other ones i had i paid about 25 dollars for at home depot I thought they were going to be good. They were not. It's kind of a lot to pay for a set of crimpers, but when you have them delivered right to you and you need them right now. Dan, or I'm going to kill you. <laughs> I'm only thinking about Kit Kat bars when I walk by you. It's got to be something you're giving off, man. Because I don't really. I ain't giving off no good vibes right now, that's for sure. I'm not giving off any good vibes right now. I've been freaking swearing. Will it run? Is there enough battery voltage to crank it and start it? Fire in the hole. Hey. Got a fuel tank pressure sensor code. Let's clear this code. Wait. No codes would be great. Ah, oh, damn it. Fuel tank pressure sensor, low voltage code. He's gotta get this inspected. So guess what? We gotta fix it. We're not done. Car runs, that's great. Let's see if our ABS code and stuff's gone. Still got a lost communication with differential model. We got wiring damage up here still too. We got rid of the 
anti-lock brake uh, faults. We have no calm in there too with the transmission control module or uh, differential control module. That one's good now. Yeah, man. Driver's door switch, front window, internal electric calibration not learned. All right. I don't care about that. Not at the moment. Hey, the only code we have is the fuel tank pressure. That is great. Sort of. I need my fuel tank pressure sensor so I can get my wire colors gray, brown, and purple. And the brown wire goes to my, oh, that's five volt ref. Okay, so all three wires do go to this fuel tank or fuel pump control module, gray, brown, and purple. This isn't one of those videos where like, it's like you, we hooked up the scan tool, we found wiring repair, wiring damage and we're repairing it. yippee ki -yay. We're learning a lot. So it's kind of like in both cases today, just You know we're gonna hear from people you shouldn't walk underneath it. You should walk around to re uh, uh, latch the lock. You're right. Don't care. Car falls on me right now, it'd be a blessing. Said gray, brown, and purple. So brown is one of the ones I fixed. Gray, brown, and purple. That's these three guys right there. I thought this was factory, but might not be. That's a shield wire. Why are we shielding this? I gotta, um, I gotta drop this, Caleb. I gotta turn the key on. So this uh, tank pressure sensor, Caleb, it is a uh, five volt ref signal and a ground. And um, do you remember the, the lesson we did on bias voltage on these sensors where you can unplug them and identify wiring using bias? And that's what we're about to do. And this is standard practice stuff here, man. Scan data still showing zero volts on our tank pressure sensor. All right, so my pressure sensor wires was uh, purple, brown, and and gray, and it should it should be should be these guys right here. No, purple is the ref. Said that wrong. Purple is the signal. That's my signal wire right there. Yeah, it's zero. It is open. What we got on this guy? I have no reference voltage either. Now it could be my meter has no ground, which is more like what we're probably dealing with. 2.8 volts is not enough. That's the brown wire. What is that? 1.8? I need a better ground. Dude, I just need a ground. 478, I'll take that for a reference or signal. And that is my, which wire is that? That's my brown wire. Purple wire, I have 3.3 volts. So why am I not? seeing that in the front of zero on that sensor let's talk to this fuel pump module see what see what we have in here why is that a no com no communication with fuel pump control module but it runs so i know that it's working these signals are here because so i have communication wiring that's messed up don't like that I can't talk to that module, Caleb. So um, as I'm struggling through this part, um, what we have is a fuel tank pressure sensor that's feeding to the fuel pump control module. And then the fuel pump control module transfers that data on the network to the engine computer uh, for the EVAP stuff. 
and my voltage signals here look good. I have a five volt RAF and around a three volt signal coming from that sensor and that should be relaying that information to the engine computer and it's not. And then when I try to, I don't have any other fault codes other than the fuel tank pressure sensor, but when I try to talk to the fuel pump control module, FPCM directly, I get it, it's giving me a no com for it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start this because it might need to be running. Some modules are like that. Um, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna start this up. So see if this talks to us now with the engine running. Still not. Question I have is that fuel pump control module is not talking to me via the data link connector, but it, the car's running. So I know that it's functioning. I know it's talking to the engine computer because that's gonna give us our fuel data too. This might not have fuel pump relay command is off. Why the hell would it say that? Fuel tank pressure sensor, low voltage. Uh, I probably just, I replace that freaking thing all the time, man. I know, but this one, I'm reading um, three volts. So the fuel tank pressure sensor on this one goes to my fuel pump module. And I'm I'm reading I'm reading three volts on the signal down there, and and that information's relayed via the network to the engine computer. Yeah, see, it should be like one and a half volt or something like that. Yeah, but I'm showing zero on the scan tool, and I have three measured at the oh. component, and that information doesn't go to the engine computer directly. It goes directly to the fuel pump control module. And the other part I I don't like is if. I can't communicate with the fuel pump control module. I have the option to do so. I've seen stuff like this before, but that's not, and it's not a problem, but I have the option to talk to the fuel pump module and- But if you can't talk to it and it's not sending the signal but through it's, the communication line. Yes, then. but I mean, if that was the case, it wouldn't be running at all. Like the engine computer is initiating now that pump module to turn on for the fuel Unless pump to run. one of the can wires be cut? I mean, it, it's possible. I looked I looked at them. This this has multiples. Yeah. It's called, ser uh, they're calling it serial data on the diagram too. Um, but that no com to the fuel pump control module. I What I don't know about this system I know it's GDI, but what I don't know is, is the fuel pump pulse width modulated? It probably is. It's probably a variable speed on the, low side. on the low side. Why else would you put a fuel pump module on there if it wasn't? Yeah. I mean, it might not be. In, in which case, if it's not, it's just turned on. Could we have a no com with that module? No, see, here's the thing. When I do a full system scan, I don't get a no com message on any of my modules uh, wanting to talk to that. Okay. Correct. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so I'm, I'm relying on a data list that might, not be, might not be accurate. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I don't know that for sure, sure, but I don't know how else to troubleshoot this fuel tank pressure sensor fault because I'm reading three volts there, but on the engine computer, um, I am reading zero volts. See, three volt sounds wrong to me. I, I agree, but I shouldn't be reading zero. Yeah. Now I got a lost communication with fuel pump control module. And that code's set when I try to talk to it. All right, so I was able to clear the codes with it running. O2 sensor heater circuit low. But this thing is a turd, Caleb. And what, why it's a turd is because I now have an O2 heater circuit control low voltage code, which is gonna be wiring too. It's, it's gonna be chewed up mouse. Mouse damage is what I was trying to say. Not a chewed up mouse. Yeah, I got, I'm getting communication faults. I didn't do anything. Lost communication with fuel pump control module. And that's probably gonna be why we're setting these uh, that fuel tank pressure sensor fault. <laughs> Look here, Caleb. Why are we setting O2 fault codes? This would be why. 
why we're setting O2 fault codes. Because of that. Where else do we have wire wiring issues? Everywhere. There's no reason that code should be there. In my opinion, there's no reason this code should be here right now. And I'm getting, I am getting no comm codes from this fuel pump control module. The hard part about this is this module, it has serial data, what they're calling on pin six and seven, serial data on 21 and 22, and then computer data lines, se another serial data on 17. So there's five different comm wires, five different ones. Purple is my signal wire, pin 10. Let me just get a measurement of that again. It's reading three volts. Whether or not three volts is accurate or not, I don't care. The fact that the computer on this signal wire of the fuel pump or fuel pressure sensor is reading three right at the module means I should be reading three at the engine computer as well. That's my reference. Signal, signal return, or ground. So the only other thing would be if that wasn't getting to the module uh, and it's broken up here, but I believe that uses a, this uses a bias. See, if I unplug this, it's gonna shut off, but I need to know. That's zero, and it's five. So no bias on this one then, yeah, 2.8 volts. It's not a sensor issue for sure. It is not a fuel tank pressure sensor problem. I mean, at least as far as, you know, the range could be off, but I'm reading 2.8 volts on that signal. That's coming from the sensor being fed up to this guy right here. Unfortunately, back probing, this connector is not going to be able to be done. I really want to see that sensor right where it goes in. Of course, it goes way down to the other end of the connector. Okay, that's my guy right there. Let's see if I can back probe it right at the module. Got it. Yeah, it's good, right up to the module. We're reading 2.8 volts on the fuel tank pressure sensor going into this module. This is the code that Jared had talked about that he couldn't get rid of. And I am getting no, no calm messages from this module. That's concerning to me. And it does come back without me messing with anything. Wait, where did you get that from? It just shows up. Heater's messed up because mouse to those wires too. The one up front. Fuel tank pressure sensor low circuit low code it's good going right to my fuel pump control module you wouldn't you'd think it wouldn't run with a lost communication with the fuel pump control module you know you, yeah, unless, you like you said it doesn't do any varying varying right It'll it just, just turns it, turn it, on. it on right the communication lines on this it's got two six and seven two more on 21 and 22 and then one more on 17. yeah so which one's which yeah i don't know let me go to let me go to the it goes to the fuel pump module yeah well that's all all of them go there let me i'm going to go to the uh computer data lines so what'd you do just oh you're running it off of this wire still that's what yeah because it it's messed up above the differential and i couldn't get to it so i just i i went with the that's just the control wire that's the fuel pump relay wire the turn on wire that's that's not your comm lines oh it's a freaking dorman module is it? Yeah, made in India. That's a dormant. Oh no. <laughs> Why was that replaced? Why'd they put a dormant module in it? Probably because it had no communication with the fuel pump module. Uh, <laughs> aftermarket parts. As I'm looking at this uh, communication diagram, Caleb, remember the EBCM we did on the Chevy truck in the driveway where we determined the can lines coming in and out? 
that's what this is that's why there's so many lines there's my fuel pump flow control module yeah it's uh with onstar and without onstar so it signals in and out in 17 they're calling that ignition i need to be able to back probe this without having to take this apart we will be liquid taping this stuff when we're done i'm getting some calm signals here light blue tan tan black switching to my lab scope calm lines two and a half to three and a half on that one two and a half to one and a half all normal looking calm signals same with that and same with that is a doorman that's the light blue wires and ignition feed that's what they're showing it there too ignition all right so where else does this go is that a link resistor rear differential clutch control module we did have codes for that remember that'd be the other one in line with this so that'd be the other thing talking on this part if i can talk to the rear diff clutch control module then this no com this lost communication this is going to be due to a dormant part and we'll and we'll make the call he's going to have to replace this module see i'm talking to that i am talking to that module that the one i just picked was the rear drive system this guy right here and i i had no faults and my fuel pump module is a no com so i i have communication signals that are normal on all four all four of these lines it's kind of an in and out type thing and everybody's talking to each other and this is a six speed and so it does have commute i do have communication with the rear differential clutch control module and so what that tells you about your whole network is in and out so the top two up here these guys that are up top and then the guys that come out like that's intact with the whole system so we don't have a communication line problem simply by the fact that i can talk to the rear differential clutch control module that comes through the fuel pump control module before it feeds through the rest of the system and so that tells us that our no com back here is not wiring related it's dorman related he needs to get a fuel pump control module for this and i think that that's what we're gonna have that's what we're gonna have um my brother get it wouldn't be a bad idea though for us before we make the call on this module that we go back to our other diagram let's do let's do some power and ground checks like we like we would for calling any other module yeah, it's weird. Pin 17 where it says serial data, it's light blue. That's an ignition feed. It's like a turn on signal for that module. Uh, 15 and 16. Pin one is ground. This is about to die. 0.06 on that ground. This should be the main feed coming in. 14 volts on that. There isn't a lot of wiring to this. I showed you you guys the in and out comm signals on this. That is a shield. Gray is low ref on pin five. That should be pump ground. Drain wire, fuel pump. This is a pulse width modulated pump. That's what we're looking at right here on this one. That should be, I'm not sure what pin that is, but that definitely looks like that would i think that might be my fuel pump volt wire gray this is the pink yeah that's the ground okay so the pink is the pump ground the gray is the pump feed and it is pulse width modulated and that's that signal right there and then we have Okay, this wire, 
called that a drain that'd be a shield that's just gonna be a ground they're calling that a drain and I am gonna liquid tape all this guys I know that this is not ideal but it's what I what I can do right now so um, I did check my main power and ground the ignition wire which they call a serial data circuit it's really not it's an ignition turn on signal for this module um, the purple wire the brown wire the gray wire so that's it that's everything that's all the wiring on this this is the turn on from the front it's why we had a no start because this one was dead we know that that one's functioning the engine computers turning this pump on it's running the pump. It looks like at a steady speed. I don't see an input to this module for, for the low pressure side of the system. And so what that means is, yeah, this pump is pulse width modulated, but it's a steady pulse width. It's not changing. Now, maybe they change it based off of load. Like if I'd go wide open throttle, it might put a full power to this pump, um, but it's not gonna be based off a of low side pressure. That means this, this is a, a mechanical return less system mechanical in that there's a pressure regulator in the tank and the pulse width modulation is really about alternator loads than anything else so they'll they'll pulse this enough to lower the amperage which is gonna not really have an effect on pressure um, it's, it's still it's still enough pressure to do what it needs to do I'm assuming here uh, because we don't have a low pressure sensor now not the fuel tank pressure that's for the evap system that's the wiring we were messing with um, I'm talking about rail pressure on the low side okay feeding up to my high pressure pump I do not believe that this system is controlling the fuel pump to control the low pressure side it's a steady pressure mechanical regulator and I'm basing that off the fact I don't have a pressure sensor for the low side of the system tank pressure is different than injector feed pressure i would normally call rail pressure but this is a gdi and rail pressure is much much higher so that's it i checked our comm lines in and out we're good to one and a half to two and a half in one and a half to two and a half out the fact that i can talk to the four-wheel drive module uh tells me that the communication network is good front to back in and out and the only thing that is causing our no calm on this module power's good grounds are good is a faulty module and the fact that this says dormant on it is uh, makes me feel a lot better about telling telling him to put a fuel pump control module on this and and that's why we have a fuel tank pressure sensor code because the fuel tank pressure sensor feeds what feeds the fuel pump control module and the fuel pump control module shares that information on the network with the engine computer well I have a no com to this module so guess what information is not getting there the only information we're missing is the fuel uh, tank pressure where's it come from it comes from this module I get it some of you are thinking well that module is working because the car's running it is from a standpoint of the turn on signal this wire that was broken engine computers telling this guy to turn on in fact we never looked at that signal here's what it looks like just a 12 volt signal engine computer is going to send a signal this way probably 12 volts this way or it could be 12 volts going that way no it'd be 12 coming this way computer turns this guy on it did turn on it did run the pump but being that we don't need any other inputs for this thing to work properly, we can have exactly what we do, which is the only thing we're missing is our fuel tank pressure sensor um, information. And where is that coming from? It's coming from this module. This module is not talking. And we can confirm that by two ways. One, I have a no-com on the scan tool. As you can see, I'm trying to talk to that module. It won't talk to me. And number two, when I go to my engine computer and read my codes, lost communication with fuel pump control module. So this is the part where we stop, we fix some other wiring here, and we make the call on this fuel pump control module, and then follow up with 
you guys after we replace this module and uh, see if we get fuel tank pressure data. That's all I need. I just need my fuel tank pressure data. Um, showing you guys comm lines before and after, we can do that, but it won't be any different than what you saw. The, these were normal looking signals. And one more time again, to talk to my four wheel drive control module or rear differential control module, what module do I have to go through? I got to go through the fuel pump control module to get to the differential control module. It's like an in and an out. It's just a weird the way GM does it. So comm lines come into the fuel pump control module, then they come out and then they feed out to the differential control module. And for the diff to talk to us, it's gotta go through the fuel pump module and then into the network. So what's that tell you about network wires? They're good. All right, so at this point we are on hold. We need, we need to, we need to uh, call the customer, see what he wants to do and uh, in the meantime, I'm going to fix the O2 heater wires off camera and uh, liquid tape some of this stuff and see what other wires we have that are chewed up. We had those pictures of wiring up front that needs to be repaired as well. But we're going to stop here with you guys as far as where we are. Let's wait to hear from the customer. I'm hoping we get a okay on doing this fuel pump control module. And if we don't, uh, it at least runs. And uh, the lesson here is uh, some calm stuff, of course, and then, you know, be careful where you park your car. <laughs> don't park your car where there's rodents. I don't know, sometimes some of us don't have that option. Get yourself a good cat. That's the lesson. All right, hopefully we'll see you guys with an update on this one.